Hello and welcome to Game Guru Classic and Game Guru Max broadcast number 107. This is where we reveal some of the inner secrets of the development for our Game Guru universe. But before any of that, let me do a sound check, make sure everyone can hear me loud and clear. And then once we know that, I can carry on talking. And it sounds like you can hear me. Hooray! <laughs> so we move on. Okay, what is the format of this live broadcast? Thank you very much if you're joining us live. It's divided up squarely into two pieces. First is a demo section, show a little bit of stuff that's going on. And then the second part is a QA, and a where you get to ask your questions and I get to answer them. But you can ask your questions right away, even whilst we're doing the demo part. Just took a question mark at the end. My friend Zach is on hand in the live chat to answer anything that he can answer. And then he's going to repeat those questions that he cannot, and then I'll answer them in the Q&A. But we'll get to that in a little bit. And the first section, the demo section, is further divided into two sections, which of course is Game Guru Classic and Game Guru Max. So without further ado, let's get stuck into the Game Guru Classic side. I mentioned it last week, I'm going to mention it again. Because it's so momentous, it's actually been two years in the making, effectively, or at least you've been waiting two years, which is we updated the Game Guru Classic repo on GitHub, so this version that you can actually download and compile into a binary is the June Fixes update. But that ain't what I want to talk to you about. I have already hinted that we've already upgraded the code 64-bit, but what I didn't tell you is when you're going to get your hands on it. Now I can tell you, mid-August. Just a couple of weeks from now, check out Steam and you'll get your 64-bit binary. And just a little piece of news as well. We are starting to see third-party contributors working on the repo, as I hoped. <laughs> you know, what was the expression of the field of dreams? If you build it, they will come. Well, I built the latest version of the repo and they came. So things are happening. I can't go into too many details because uh, I don't have too many details but I do have some headliner keywords to sort of get you excited and hopefully you'll kind of read between the lines and figure out what it might be you may already know you may some internal secrets no more than I do but for those who don't know what I'm talking about let me give you the headlines and I absolutely think these are going to be in the mid-August update first of all LUT Genguru Max had a little bit of LUT um, but in case you don't know what LUT is Google it. <laughs> I'm sure there is a LUT in the context of graphics rendering systems. Yeah. Uh, another one, saturation. I'll leave it there. Right, sepia. I'll leave that there. One that I can talk a little bit more about is uh, screen space ambient occlusion that has been upgraded to S. Uh, sorry, HB AO, which is a better version of screen space ambient occlusion. What does all that mean? Just make sure graphics look better when they're rendered during the post process, and then what you see in the in, on the screen in your game looks better than without HBAO. And the final one, contrast adaptive sharpening. Mm. So what was all that about? Well, it's just a little hint that we're not just releasing the repo and right, good luck, have fun compiling it, and oh, here's a 64-bit update. There's actually functionality. There is improvements now going on in the Game Guru Classic universe. So I'm really pleased to give you some give you some hints. And the purpose of rolling Classic into our broadcast is that when I actually have my hands on uh, this juicy update mid August, I will be able to present it to you during these broadcasts, and you'll be able to see it live in color using the graphics engine. You can see what I'm talking about, and then go into a few more details. So keep an eye out for that. So without further ado, let's move swiftly on to Game Guru Max. Okay, so what have we got on the demo section for Game Guru Max? A few things, a few things. Um, anyone who noticed the release on Steam this week of a new booster pack, that took up a little bit of our time. Not necessarily the assets themselves, that was done by a third party, a most excellent artist called Matt Blosser, aka Bond1. But we did add to add some functionality to support additional animation systems, and so some work went into that. So now we're putting in more work, new work, fresh work, for the Friday build. 
As you may know, we do a release every other Friday. Last Friday, no, but this Friday, yes. So you're gonna get a nice juicy build with new stuff. And what I wanna show you is some of those new things that you get to play with. Still in development, because it's only Wednesday, got two more days left, but I just wanna show you off the top, um, generally what you'll be looking forward to. So you may have seen this in a previous broadcast, but it, it was probably only ever one broadcast, so it is it does bear repeating and that's something called behaviors behaviors what are behaviors they are the logic you can assign to game objects to make those game objects do things for example this document here that you may place on a table in your game has logic which says if you press the e key you can look at the document read the image and this is a document which gives you a clue for play the game a bit further on so that's an example of a behavior another one this innocuous looking patch on the floor, if I were to walk over it, <laughs> ah, spike trap, and then I move away, it goes away. So that deducts my health, so be careful. Now that's a clever way of doing spike traps in a game, is just leave a little, just leave the tips of the spike, so uh, an observant games player can say, oh no, that's a trap. Um, oh, sorry. Um, I suspected that might happen. I have been fiddling around with the source code. It shouldn't take me too long to get straight back into it, show you where I left off. Yeah, that's one of the things, every now and again, because it's Wednesday, not Friday. Friday is the version where it's been thoroughly tested. Wednesday is the version where it's, it's sort of still being played with. So in addition to the spike trap, you can see the camera up there. Now these three things you've already had. Admittedly on Friday you'll get a new version of the spike trap, which has some further properties. Um, the security camera is got its BDI on it, and that creates an alert, so you can do sound effects if you want. But here's some new things that you're going to get in Friday's build. There's the hide show logic, so if you enter a trigger zone, you can trigger entities too, or other objects, to disappear. So in that particular case, I had a trigger zone here, I linked it to an object that had hide show object, and it hid, and you've got different properties to hide or show, show or hide etc. Um, we've also added some more objects. Um, you'll find those, um, just if I can recall, uh, Max Collection Miscellaneous Test Models. What is the Test Models folder? It is a location where we place objects that isn't necessarily uh, you would use every day in the creation of your game levels, but what they, what are, they are great for is showing off logic. So it's a model that helps you see what a behavior does. And then of course you go out and you find a better model and you assign that behavior to something that's more suited to your game. Here's one that I'm still working on. I should say I'm working on all of the scripts that I'm showing, I didn't actually write. Um, many of the scripts, in fact probably most of them for Friday's build, was created by Necrom59. Uh, excellent collection of behaviors, far too many for me to get ready tested and released on Friday, but you get a chunk of them. And this is one of them, the sentry gun at the moment. I've just put all the elements in place. By the time I finish testing, this sentry gun will scan, and then if it's within your, within its field and you walk past it, it locks in on you, and then it starts firing this sort of effect, and then rips you to pieces. Really look forward to seeing this one come alive. But I only dropped it in not too long ago, and I wanna make sure it's right, so that when you drop this, this, this stand, this first part, that's one model. You can drop this on top, which is a rotatey part, and then this sort of flame thing is a third. So that's actually three objects you're looking at there, but the, the behavior system is clever enough that it can link them all together, and so they can work in unison. And one thing that was released before, but I don't think we released the models for it, so it really was a bit of a mystery item, is scuba gear. I've shown you the individual things, uh, but you can get a full scuba kit, uh, which I've assigned as a scuba behavior. If I select E, I've now collected that. Now remember before when you go underwater, you were just blubbing about. Now, you, you auto activates your scuba gear. You'll notice at the bottom, you've now got an oxygen level because you've got air tanks. You can last a lot longer underwater. But what a bonus, look at the top, a navigation compass, north, south, east, and west. <laughs> Now anyone smart enough might just pull out the behavior and the images and just take that navigation compass and have it on dry land. <laughs> but for now, let me get out of the water. 
And that's just a couple. That's just um, three or four behaviors that I've already been playing with. I think Necrim has provided over 30. <laughs> so there's going to be quite a, a lot of nice behaviors. Some of them you'll see on Friday and some after Friday. So I'm looking forward to revealing those and including them in future broadcasts. So not only just talk about them from a theoretical point of view, and create something in a level, run up to it, show you how it works and all of its intricacies. Uh, and the final thing I want to show you, also related to behaviors, is I've cleaned up the behavior library. So as I was in the mood, I was always, I've added an animation library, which is a new thing. You'll see that um, in, in Friday's build as well. But I also have, if we click on this behavior icon, I've cleaned up the library a little bit. So you'll notice now, it doesn't include folders that make no sense, like an image folder or a GFX folder or an AI folder. It only includes the folders you're actually going to need for the different kinds of objects. There's behaviors for animals, the game elements marker, behaviors and logic. Most of the things would fall into the objects. And then of course, if you've got characters, you've got logic for people. And of course, anything you create yourself, which will appear in the users folder. But you'll notice there's another thing here, purchased. Now what that one is, it's going to be when we link the um, the Game Creator Asset Store into Game Guru Max. What does that mean? If you go into the Game Creator Asset Store and you buy a script, a behavior, or a collection of behaviors, then this is where they would appear. And I'm pretty sure a lot of the scripts are going to be free. Not necessarily just pledging that anyone who ever creates a script is going to not charge for it, but I want to see a lot of uh, scripts slash behaviors appearing in the asset store as free ones. So even though it says purchased, the only reason that nomenclature uh, has been used is it's familiar territory if you are buying objects and bring them in because you find in the place with, uh, same place when you add an object into your library. And so any new behaviors that you phone in the asset store and brought in, you'll be able to click that and you just get your shortlist here and then you can sort by what happened what's the newest what's the oldest so any new ones will appear at the top and i expect over time this will be huge there'll be a lot of behaviors to choose from you get to pick the ones you want and you'll be able to find your nice shortlisted collection in this area here at the moment it's blank because it's still being worked on but yeah keep an eye for that one should be really cool for community creating originating and sharing behaviors well beyond the behaviors that we create internally so that's what I wanted to show you in Game Guru Max. I hope you uh, get to play with some of the new behaviors on Friday when we release that. Can't say exactly how many behaviors we're gonna finally put in, but the ones we do will be tested and ideally have a test model that can be dropped in and it already has the, the behavior attached to it. So without further ado, let's get on to the Q&A and see if you've got any questions for me. Okay, so I'm going to grab the live chat window. Looking for Big Orange. Yes, thank you, Zach. Um, the first question, this was probably posted earlier, but has been repeated, so I can answer it. And the question is, I was wondering, how many A people are working on Game Guru Max? Uh, we have a team, but a very small team. We're not a big AAA studio with tens and hundreds of millions of dollars taking two years to write a front-end interface. We're, we're lean and mean, and <laughs> we're, we're flexible, for that way. Uh, but yeah, we, we have a small team. It, it numbers less than five. Um, the, the good news is we have a great community who contribute, and so we're augmented. Our core team is augmented by the entire community. So, and I think that's kind of the way forward, you know, making more stuff customizable. So we don't have to do everything. The community can originate a lot of stuff and then feed that back into the community for everybody else to use. I think that's a great idea moving forward and I think we'll be expanding on that idea. 3Con comes in with a quick question, really quick. Great, thank you. Any chance to add video textures to the safe cam monitor system in real time, I mean? Uh, I don't think we've got a safe cam. Uh, if, if you mean security camera, there's no plans to do uh, video playback at the moment. Uh, loading in MP4s 
and playing them inside a game engine is never a great idea. I think I've mentioned it in previous broadcasts that the closest you probably want to get to is texture atlasing. But again, that's more of a skill where you'd need to create all that. Here's another question. This is probably from before. Uh, when we will get improvements to vegetation as well as procedural scattering for the rocks and other small props. Um, the next improvement to vegetation will be the introduction of custom vegetation. So you can actually create your own uh, grasses and then add them much like you would add a new particle that you've created. You will have to create your own grasses and add them as custom grasses and then you can paint with them instead of the stock ones that we've provided. There are no short short term plans on adding procedural rocks and procedural details. The only thing that we're doing procedurally right now is the scattering of trees and the scattering of grasses. And we want to get that one in, working solid in the early access phase and also making sure that you can customise both those things as well before we start adding something like rocks. Here's another old question. How do I make the Game Guru crossbow work? Uh, there is no game. Uh, there is no crossbow in Game Guru Max, so I assume you mean Game Guru Classic crossbow. We'll be working on that. As I've said in previous broadcasts, we're looking at the pipeline from Game Guru Classic to Game Guru Max, and if the crossbow is of a sufficient compatibility that it can work in Max, then we'll make sure that that pipeline can happen. But there will be so it's inevitable. There'll be some assets in Classic that just really won't port well over to Max for multiple reasons, whether it's the logic or the animation or just the quality. So we'll take it on a case-by-case -case basis, but we are working on that pipeline if indeed you're talking about a Game Guru classic crossbow. Here's another question. Can you show the chat where the weapon behavior is? Show the chat, I take it show you in the chat, where the weapon behavior is. There are no weapon behaviors. So you can add a weapon into your scene, you can place a weapon in the character's hands, or you can place a weapon in the player's hands. But the weapon will do what it does. It basically fires if it's a projectile or it clubs something over the head if it's a melee weapon. There isn't any, what you would call, in quotes, behaviour for that weapon. It's all built into the weapon and who decided what that weapon does and how it animates and its strengths and its speeds was all done by the weapon creator the artist who created that weapon, and it's not a straightforward process to make a weapon. But there's no actual logic attached to the weapon. It's all built in and use prop it uses properties and settings to tell the weapon what to do. Okay, uh, just checking out the clock, we're 18 minutes in. So remember last week, maybe if you tuned in last week, I think it was a 50 minute broadcast, which I thought was a bit scandalous. The aim is always to make sure that around the 30 minute mark. So I'm going to ask, answer a few more questions and then I'm going to pick two more questions from people who haven't asked a question yet. So if you've been sitting back, now is the time to throw a question in. You may get it answered today. So another question. This is from Jareth. Are you still going to do a tutorial for adding your own characters to the Game Guru Max rig? You told me to email you a few weeks back which I did, but never got a response. Yeah, um, emails can sometimes not get responded to. I usually bounce them on, potentially to another team member, or I add them to an issues bar or add details somewhere to make sure that the information isn't lost. Best place to put information down that it never gets lost is by posting your own issue on the issues board, um, especially if it's something about a feature request, or more importantly, if it's a bug. But I think what you're talking about is a guide, some uh, way to know how to create your own characters. The first guide we're going to do is character creator parts. So how do you create all the parts you need uh, to put onto the character creator? And then you go into the character creator and then you create your character from there. That's basically the pipeline. Bringing in a character with a foreign rig, um, that's done in a different way. That's done using the model importer. It's probably a different guide. Something you can do now, but it requires a little bit of technical skill, understanding rigs and animation, etc., and stuff like that. But I think as a first stepping stone for an artist who wants to create unique characters, it's best that we uh, use our rig because everything else supports that rig. The animation system, the logic, the whole game engine, in fact, knows that rig and can use that rig to the best effect. So yeah, um, if it's not already there, stick it in the issues board and uh, if it's not assigned, I will assign it to me. 
Here's a question from uh, Loretta. How can I change the ally character so it lowers its weapon when not using? Um, buy the animation booster pack, uh, but it's optional. The idea is that uh, the idle animation of, a, of an ally character, the only one you've really got when they're armed is it's pointing straight forward like that. Once the ally is out of danger, the idea, at least for the behaviour, is that they put the weapon away. So they won't be pointing the weapon forward. It should actually be in the holster and they're not holding the weapon at all. If that isn't happening, like the allies killed all the characters, um, and you know, the, the allies still holding the weapon front and centre, that shouldn't happen. That's a bug. So if it is indeed happening, provide a step by step in the issues board. We'll fix that bug so it, it, it goes away. There is a tick box, however, in the allied characters called Alerted. If you've got that ticked on, they'll always have the gun out. If you untick the alerted flag, they'll put the gun away as soon as there isn't a combat situation for the ally to deal with. So that was the intended behaviour for allies. So uh, if it ain't happening like that, it's a bug. So please let me know in the issues board. Here's another question from Zach, which may have come from before. Will it be possible to create other light sources than the provided one? Other light sources? Well, light is light, isn't it? Let me just go back into my little test level, just to give you some context. What different kinds of light are we talking about? Here is the light game element. It has light. You can have a white light, a blue light, or a red light. You can have a spotlight that's red or green or orange. And then the light itself can have behaviours, whether it's constant light, or whether it flickers, whether it rotates, whether it strobes. But light is light. Um, so you probably need to clarify on what other kinds of light, what other kinds of emitting photon, would you like to see? Sounds like a future request, so perhaps put it in the issues board and uh, we'll deal with it there. So looking for another question mark, and I've scrolled down quite a bit this time. Duke229 says, what did I miss? Oh, about 10 answers and <laughs> some demo, but uh, it's going on the YouTube channel later, so you can watch the whole thing um, in, in less than half an hour from now, I suspect, once uh, YouTube's finished compiling and crunching and putting it in a place where you can watch it from the beginning. A um, lot of conversation going on, scrolly, 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 and I found one from Lucas. Question four, for Lee, uh, can you briefly show us how to add a timer to a trigger after 30 seconds spawn X thing? Uh, there is no spawn in Game Guru Max. Spawn as in create a brand new object from scratch. The closest you can get is that an object can be revealed. So you can put an object in your level, hide it, and then when you enter a trigger zone, you can show that object. And in fact, whilst I'm here, um, mm, 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 mm. this one you'll notice that remember when we walked into this white square and this uh, canister appeared the behavior is hide show and the logic that you're asking it to do is when you enter this and show, I'll show you the logic it's connecting to that one it's connecting to the flippers when I enter this trigger zone the behavior said hide this one and hide this one now I'm not going to spend the next 20 minutes writing a behavior to do a 30 second time delayed thing but you can see kind of where it would happen it would happen here in the behavior system it could even be an extension of the hide show system i think this is hide show version 5 so if you asked necrim the uh, the author of this behavior can we have an extra property where when you enter the trigger zone there's x number of seconds before you hide or show an object it's probably where you'd want it to be off the top of my head, I don't think there is a behavior that does exactly that now. And I think it's probably a good idea that we don't try and duplicate functionalities. And instead, if there's a behavior that's kind of nearly there, and you just want a bit of extra functionality in it, it's probably best to add to that behavior than create a whole new one, just for a very interesting special case. But down the road, I do expect people to get the hang of creating their own behaviors. And I'm going to help in that regard but that's for the future. That's some plans that I've not quite got straight in my head before I start wittering on about them. 
So I'm looking at the clock. We are netting getting steadily and nicely onto the 30 minute mark. So I'm going to pick two questions from people who haven't asked me a question yet. And I'm going to answer those and then we'll move all questions to next Wednesday. So let's see who hasn't asked a question. And this is from Tom. Congratulations, you're the first. Can you have several behaviours for each character? So if using a play animation behaviour, can the character go for, say, digging a hole to attacking you if the AI detects you? Not with the play animation behaviour, but yes, you're right. There is a way that one behaviour can fire off another behaviour. So you can take the play animation behaviour and with just a few little changes, obviously it requires scripting know-how, but with a few of those changes, you can have the play animation's new version of the behaviour digging away. And as soon as something happens, whether they see you or they hear a noise or whatever it happens to be, boom, you can load another behaviour. And that behaviour can be anything. In this particular case, it could be the melee combat attack. So, so the shovel they were using to dig the hole is now a weapon. And <laughs> they come chasing you with it. That, you know, I could probably do that in about 20 minutes. And I'll have a new behaviour created and drop it in. Uh, technically it's a feature request but it's probably going to happen anyway long before I get round to it and it'll be done by the community because the play animation is just to give you an example it's uh, it's a brand new thing this animation library didn't exist three weeks ago and I do I do see a lot more properties in a lot of behaviors referencing animations and letting you change those animations and as you say triggering other behaviors from the properties panel instead of being inside the uh, uh, the behavior logic itself. So, and the last question of the day is from Zorgo33. Would it be possible to request a Steam key for Game Guru Max if you have it as a non-Steam version? And most importantly, could the data possibly be moved over like imported models? Uh, that's a two-part question. The first part is yes, absolutely. If you have a non-Steam version of Game Guru Max, we will be more than happy to give you a Steam key. Absolutely. Absolutely no problem at all. Just contact support. Um, give us the email address that's the same as what you logged in with the TGC account, just so we can verify you on Max. And we'll pop a key uh, in reply so you can get your Steam version up and running. And the second part of the final question is, do you retain your imported models? Yes, you already do. The writables folder that the non-Steam version uses is the same folder as the Steam version uses. So running the Steam version, well, installing the Steam version and then launching it, you'll see all the other user folders is still populated with all the assets that you've created thus far. Always a good idea to make a backup, just in case. After all, this is Lee who we're talking about. But yeah, in theory, and more than theory, I've, I've done it plenty of times myself, your writables folder is intact. Just run it from Steam and you'll still find all your imported models. So thanks for all your questions. Um, some good ones there. I'll be back next Wednesday at uh, 7 p.m. BST to answer more lovely questions and obviously to show you more of what's going on in the wonderful world of Game Guru Max. Look out for the update this Friday. There is no update next Friday, but there will be an update the Friday after. I also want to mention the screenshot competition. Uh, check out previous news on that. Super, super easy to enter. Just make a really nice screenshot using light and casting shadows and then email it to me and it goes in the pot to be judged with real prizes at the end of it. So I'm looking forward to showing everyone all the entries and revealing the winners uh, in the future. I think it's the 10th of August. So until next week, thank you very much for your kind attention and I'll speak to you next week. Till then, goodbye.